Hello, hello everybody! Cat here, and welcome back to another vloggy type thing. Anyways... So, I have not been very good about uploading videos since basically my birthday when I dyed my hair purple. Um, so I'm gonna kinda hang out here and give you some reasons, <coughs> excuses, um, why that hasn't been happening. Uh, the main reason, I guess, uh, my uploads all but stopped was I had a few things going on in my personal life. Uh, just some things with friends, some relationship drama, and I wasn't really enjoying functioning at any level above, like, basic necessity. Um, I was trying to get some stuff sorted out for my visa and my new job. And I was just generally trying to maintain, you know, a positive outlook on everything um, while not falling apart internally. I don't handle relationship drama very well. Uh, by relationship, I mean, like, relationships with friends. I don't handle when I get into disputes with friends very well. I tend to beat myself up a little bit too much, which then can make it a little bit difficult to be the happy and cheerful person. I prefer to be in life. So recording videos just wasn't really working for me. I tried a few times, but I was having a hard time finding things to talk about. Uh, I was having a hard time staying focused on anything, and I didn't want to put out content that I wasn't feeling proud of. I didn't want to put out any videos that I would look back on later and think, you know, wow, you're sad. Stop. Uh, that isn't to say being sad is a bad thing, but I just prefer not to celebrate those moments. I prefer, you know, to kind of hang out and share things with you guys when I'm feeling up here. All the way up here. Positive, happy, cheerful, myself. Um, so that is the main reason why I stopped recording for a while there. And then once things started clearing up with that and I was able to kind of relax, because um, for me, a lot of nervous feelings and anxieties comes from, you know, what am I doing wrong? What should I be doing instead? What can I be doing to help this situation? And once I realize, you know, it's out of my hands and there are things that are going to be out of your, your hands, boys and girls, uh, you can't always fix situations. You can't fix other people their anxieties and insecurities are not your responsibility. Uh, and once I realized that this was a situation of somebody else's insecurities and anxieties kind of bleeding into my life too much, uh, I was able to kind of put the brakes and step back and say, okay, your insecurity is making me feel anxious and that's not okay. Um, and I think I did what is best for both of us and kind of just pulled back altogether. And there was a little bit of relationship drama. The guy that I had been seeing casually started seeing somebody less casually. So that was a fun thing that I found out when I asked if we were still on for dinner. So there was kind of a few days after that um, where I just was very bewildered um, and wasn't quite sure how I wanted to handle the situation or anything. And so I... I didn't want to start recording there, even though I'd started feeling a little bit better about things. Um, and then right after that, like within two weeks of that going down, uh, or rather right before that, keep on a schedule here, right before that National Novel Writing Month started, I am so far behind, but I'm still going to do it. I am fighting. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do the thing. So National Novel Writing Month, for those of you who don't know, uh, or NaNoWriMo for short, um, is a writing contest where the goal is to write 50,000 words in only the month of November. Uh, another popular kind of spinoff is Inktober, where you, you know, are supposed to draw something every day of October. Uh, I'm a much better writer. Okay, better maybe not the right word. I'm a much more consistent writer than I am artist. Art makes me hate life sometimes because it's very frustrating and nothing looks right. Anyways, um, so I've been doing nano 
pretty consistently every year since grade 11, since 2011 when I was in high school. I took a break for two years while I was in university, but uh, after I graduated, I immediately jumped back into it. I love Dano because it gets me writing. Um, it, it helps motivate me to actually finish things. I have a really bad habit of starting things and then never finishing them because I get distracted by a shiny over here or over here, over here. So with Nano, I don't allow myself to count um, multiple projects. So once I have finished some, uh, started something, unless I'm going to put it down and commit wholly to another manuscript, I'm not counting those words. And if I commit to that manuscript, the words written until that point don't count for anything. So Nano helps me finish things. It's, it's good. It's, it's a good thing. Um, so for the first two weeks of November, I was basically continuing to do the language exchange uh, I've been doing with a young Korean girl out here. I've been helping teach her English in exchange for delicious honey tea that has helped with my cough. I yeah, so basically it's been writing at home, writes ins in public, and teaching uh, informally. Because I'm not teaching, because I'm not working right now. Anyways, um, so it wasn't so much that I was busy because I did have a lot of time out. Like I'd meet my daily goals and I'd have time. Uh, I'd been playing a lot of Stardew Valley in that downtime, but I was exhausted mentally. Um, there were no witticisms to come from me. Um, I couldn't really think of commentary. I like Stardew Valley because it's basically Harvest Moon, but I can use, hey, can use my uh, controller. Um, and I don't really have to think. I just kind of go through the monotony of farming and fishing every day. And there's something kind of therapeutic about that. I enjoy it a lot. Um, I don't think I'll ever record Stardew Valley for the channel because, again, uh, unless I'm playing in like a public server with other people and we're in voice chat, I don't have much to say about Stardew Valley. Um, I'm sure, you know, I could I could give my commentary on the individual characters because I will say that Stardew Valley does villagers a lot better than most of the Harvest Moon games I've played, which is a lot. Um, Stardew Valley does a really good job in terms of individual characters that they have their own personalities. You know, there are some that I really like, some that I really don't like. But I don't really have much to say about it because I've played so much Harvest Moon. To me, it's just like a PC Harvest Moon game. Uh, it's it's not much different. I, like there are some mechanical differences, of course, some narrative differences. But on a basic level, it's a farming game with festivals where you're trying to get a hubby. So... Um, basically Stardew Valley has been absorbing whatever soul I have left in me that wasn't writing. And then just last week, my best friend came out from California with her boyfriend and they were staying with me, um, which was super awesome. We did a lot of really fun stuff. They got me, they got me a lot of things, but they got me a snake. Uh, I don't know if I've talked to you guys about my D&D &D stuff all that much, considering I talk to everybody else about my D&D &D stuff all that much. Uh, but my ranger, my baby Kalen, has a pseudo dragon. It's a, it's a real dragon. I thought it was a pseudo dragon when I made this. Oh, wow, that focus. I thought it was a pseudo dragon. It's not. That's a story for another day. Um, but he is this color, this big, beautiful blue color. They found this snake, and it does this thing that is really popular on Korean, sh like, children's shirts right now, and it's my favorite, and whenever my students wore one of these shirts, I'd make them show me, where the sequins are double-sided. And it makes me so happy, because now he's a, a purple, purple boy with a blue stripe. Um, so I am in love with this thing. I basically just sat on the bed and played with it for the first um, little bit. And then, eh, 
Uh, they got me the DM's handbook, they got me the player handbook, and they got me the monster manual. And I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm planning on running some D&D stuff when I go home, uh, which I'll get to in a little bit. Um, but right, so they were here, and every day of the week, we were running around doing something, which is great. I've been living in Korea for about a year and a half, and... I would say 98% of the tourism that I've done while living in Korea for the last year and a half was done in the last seven days. Um, we went to the Seoul History Museum. We went to one of the major palaces. We went to the main uh, traditional uh, Hang Hang Hanuk village, uh, the main traditional Korean folk village. Um, we climbed a mountain to see Namsung Tower because I am an idiot and I saw the buff path and I'm like, oh, this goes like really far around because we're going up a mountain. Of course, it doesn't just go right up. This isn't a Skyrim horse. Uh, I looked at the bus, the bus pack on my phone. I'm like, it'll probably be more direct. It might even be faster to walk. It's not faster to walk. So we climbed up a mountain and then my best friend and I went to the top of Namsung Tower her boyfriend stayed down on the main floor not big on heights I don't blame him um, and so that was like <laughs> a massive time commitment because we we climbed the mountain on foot we got some really really cool pictures though uh, I discovered that my camera or my camera my phone Samsung S Samsung Galaxy. I don't remember if I got the S5 or the S6. I think I have the S6. I went in wanting the S5, but they convinced me to go with the S6. Anyways, I love the camera. Um, not sponsored, but literally I went with the Samsung uh, Galaxy line when I bought this phone because I love their cameras so much. I did not realize that it had a panoramic camera, so I was playing around with that a lot. It was really fun. Um... So yes, we we did Namsung Tower and we climbed a mountain. We saw a palace, went to a history museum, went to a traditional folk village. We saw Cirque du Soleil because uh, they were in Seoul for the first time in forever. I got them tickets and we went to see Kuza, which was super cool and really funny. Um, my Fitbit thought I was exercising. Hey, wake up. Uh, my Fitbit thought that I was exercising because my heart rate, which sits at like a pretty steady 69-ish, um, went up to like over 100. I think it was 102. Uh, because they did this thing on this spinny thing up in the sky where they were like jumping off of it. And I'm like, somebody is going to die. Like it gave me legitimate anxiety. <laughs> thought I was about to watch somebody lose their life. I rationally understand they practice and they have safety harnesses, but at the same time, oh my god, adrenaline junkies. Um, yeah. And then, so we did the tower, the village, the palace, the museum. We did um, Cirque du Soleil. What else did we do? We did so much. We did not go to Nami Island. We did not go to Itaewon. Those are the only two things we didn't do. But I don't really like Itaewon, to be honest. It's basically America and Korea. Um, we did a lot of shopping and a lot of walking around. And a lot of commuting. Uh, everything was basically like an hour and a half apart. So even though most days we actually wound up doing two things, um, it would be like an hour and a half to get out there, then an hour and a half to the next place, then like an hour and a half back. So it was just like, we'd wake up, we'd get breakfast, we'd go, 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 go all day until we were like zero stamina left and we'd like truck back home and we'd basically pass out. Oh, and the last day we did a little D&D one shot, uh, which was super fun and I hope we get to finish sometime. Um, so last week was insanely busy and insanely fun, and I am still just so happy that they came out here and we got to do so much. Um, it was really nice to spend time with them again. Uh, it's been a couple years, so I just feel like part of me is really sad because my apartment is really empty and also really cold without two extra bodies. I lost like a full 10 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, my apartment was like consistently 
around 24 to 25 degrees Celsius when they were here. And I woke up this morning and my apartment was 19 degrees. Um, so it was really cold. Uh, I had to turn off the floor heating again. Um, and food is sad. Uh, I always ate dinner with my family when I was home. So I always appreciate it when people come out to visit me because I actually get to eat with other people. And I think that food is a really social thing. It's better to eat with company than it is to eat alone. Though food is always delicious. So there's still that at least. The food is still really good. That has been my month and a half in review. I'm sorry I vanished off the face of the earth. Uh, I said a couple minutes ago that I was going home because I'm going home for one month. Um, basically from December 7th through December 29th, uh, December 29th is when I get back on my plane. Um, I'm going back to Canada to actually be with my family for Christmas because last Christmas I worked. Christmas, I wouldn't say it's a big deal in my family. Oma's Christmas is a bigger deal. Usually the weekend before Christmas, my entire extended family on my dad's side, all of my uncles and my cousins... Uh, and now their children and also partners will, um, all, we all, like my Oma rents out this hall and we all do this massive potluck. There's like over 50 people, easy. So there's a lot of people and we'll do like gifts and music and food and card games. And it's just like, you get to see all the little babies because everybody's having babies running around. Um... And that's always been like a lot of fun. On Christmas Day proper, my Nana, my Granda, and my aunt and my uh, uncle on my mom's side, uh, along with my cousin, will usually come over uh, for Christmas dinner for the afternoon. They leave. It's not quite a big as big an affair, but it's still nice to see everybody. Um, but missing Oma's Christmas last year was really, really tough. Uh, I'd missed it when I was in university, but was at least home for Christmas proper. So I would like go and visit my closer relatives while I was back for the two weeks between exams and the startup of the next term. Um, but living out here, I missed everything. Like I, I'm pretty introverted. I do pretty well on my own. In fact, I really don't like going out with very few exceptions. Uh, it takes some pretty special company for me to actually want to go out of my apartment. So I, um, well, I'm not a huge fan of being at home because my mom actually expects me to function like a social individual, go out, see people, do things, you know. Uh, I would rather stay at home and kind of hang out on the internet with gaming with friends or, you know, go over to a friend's place and just kind of sprawl out on the floor, play card game, play D&D, &D, play video games. Like, I don't really like going out and partying. It's not really my scene. Um, it's just too noisy and too crowded and drunk people make me angry about life. Uh, especially because I don't drink. Like, I will drink, but not to get drunk. Uh, if I'm drinking something, it's because I like the taste of it. And basically, I've come to discover there's, like, sober, there's tipsy, and there's this, like, halfway stage between tipsy and drunk where you just get really tingly and warm and sleepy and it's so comfortable. And everyone's like, you just need to have another one. And I'm like, why would I want to have another one? <laughs> the universe is perfect right now. Everything feels so nice. So, yeah, uh, I, I digress. I'm really excited to see my family again. I miss them a lot. I'm really excited to see my dogs. I miss them a lot. Sadie looks old. Kobe is my boy, and I miss him so much. So I'm, yeah, going home for a month. And because I'm going home for a month, that... Why did you focus? What are you focusing on? Okay. Um, because I'm going home for a month... Well, this... This is going to be staying in Korea. I'm going to have my laptop with me, but it's... a. Uh, a nine-year-old laptop. <laughs> it's not in great shape. It barely runs games. It runs Skyrim at 14 frames per second. Yeah. You can imagine what that does to... And I mean, like, 
Skyrim, not the, the fancy remastered. I mean like unmodded the original Skyrim. Well, not unmodded. I have Sky UI, the script extender. Like if there's mods in the Skyrim on my laptop, it is mods to try and help the game run more smoothly because like the game would crash if I tried to load more than one map at a time because I hit something on a weird angle. So like, it's just not good. Um, and there's no way that it's going to be able to handle playing games and recording games at the same time. So, this is the plan. Over the course of this week, I have two language exchange sessions. I have a writing event. I have a movie that I'm going to see with a Korean friend before I leave. I have a thank God it's over party for Nano. I have to get a page to get my, basically a paper version of my alien registration card. So they'll let me back into the country. I have to pack. I have to buy gifts. I have to pack those gifts as well. I have to clean my apartment so that when I come back, I will thank my past self. And I have to record four episodes of Undertale, four episodes of Skyrim, and possibly an episode of something else. I'm not sure yet. I might do a stream of Pillars of Eternity somewhere in there. Um, and I have to edit all of those recordings minus Pillars of Eternity because I just upload those as I recorded them on Twitch. So. I have a lot. I have no idea how Skyrim is going to go because that's going to be commentary about probably a lot of what happened while Jenna and Ryan were here. Um, d and plans, that sort of thing. But I don't want to go too in-depth about the D&D plans because I'm planning on doing the D&D things while I'm back in Canada. And I have friends. Shocking. <laughs> I have friends that I want to play with, so I don't want to give them... <laughs> My D&D plans. I will talk about the one shot that we ran, because that was really, really fun. Um, that kind of thing. So basically, these next two weeks, I am going to be making up for all of the adulting I haven't done for the last, like, month and a half. Um, when I come back from Korea, I will be teaching again. Uh, my ARC, my visa up, uh, update was approved. I just need to get the tangible card. So starting January 2nd, I'm going to be teaching and hopefully being at the academy again is going to help get me back into the routine I was on of recording uh, Skyrim on Tuesdays, uploading Wednesdays, recording uh, whatever game I'm playing on Sundays. I'm going to try and do streams of Pillars of Eternity every Thursday morning, Korean Standard Time. Um, that works out to... Wednesday evening in North America and I have no clue in Europe. I don't think I have any European subscribers though. Um, the 16 of you I'm pretty sure are all Korean or North American and I love and appreciate every one of you. But I am going to try and get back onto a normal schedule of uploading things. One thing I'm planning on doing in the new year is I want to try and do at least one speed paint a month. Um, I think they're called speed paints. I've been trying to get back into drawing digitally. Uh, I enjoy it a lot more than drawing on paper. And basically I'm going to record the drawings, process, painting, etc. Fast forward it and throw some non-copyright track in the background. I'm going to try and do one of those a month. Uh, just because I need to practice more. Um, yeah, that's that's basically it. Uh, I'm going to, to get back on track with these things. Sorry I went MIA, and thank you guys for your patience. Um, I know that the purple is all but faded from my hair. It's really hard to tell. I still love it. I just can't re-dye it because I'm not allowed to have unnaturally colored hair while I'm at the academy. Um, once I've paid off my student debt, I'm thinking about dyeing it, uh, ginger. Become a redhead. That's something I've always wanted to do. But we will see. Um, I still need to get it growing. It's thinned out a lot because of some bad decisions I made in university. Um, but that, you know what? Maybe I'll talk about that in the Skyrim video. There we go. One of my Skyrim videos, it's going to be story time. My horrible roommate. You can look forward to it. And until then, thank you guys for everything. Thank you for your patience, your support, your comments, for watching my videos. I appreciate it a lot. If you like hanging out with me, make sure you hit that like button. 
If you are not already subscribed, please hit that too, because it does make me feel really good when someone subscribes. It tells me that you're liking what I'm doing, that you want to see more, and it helps motivate me to keep putting out videos. You know, it, it feels really nice to see my community growing. And um, in the meantime, I hope you guys have a rockin' Thanksgiving for the Americans who have just had Thanksgiving pass. To anybody else who has any holidays in the near future, I hope that you have fantastic holidays. Thank you guys for everything, and I will see all you folks in the next video. Bye-bye! That went on for longer than I thought it would.